Ancient Uparts A section of ancient history which many find as their preference, it is undeniably one of the strongest areas of argument within the study of antiquities which is in support of the past existence of once highly capable, incredibly technologically advanced, yet now lost ancient civilizations. The ancient astronaut theory being one main topic of interest within the Uparts realm. When it comes to certain current or now past allies, in alliance with our so often reiterated posit of the existence and the volumes of surviving evidence in support of a now lost, often also claimed, now actively hidden, enormous number of chapters of human history. It is thanks to their laborious collaborative efforts which has allowed us to accomplish such a strong and compelling evidence. In addition, the realization that much of these sites and anomalous features also display a strong evidential suggestion that many of these civilizations somehow succumbed suddenly, possibly to a past cataclysm. However, if this vast and still growing file of evidence, all suggesting sudden demise, is, in the future, somehow found to have been an undeniable reality, possibly a repeated event, a question arises. Who could these claimed ancient astronauts possibly have been? The evidence suggesting sudden halts in undertaking within countless elaborately created by clearly highly resourced people, megalithic quarries, which were inexplicably abandoned, litter our planet. This may suggest that these uparts are either of returning, unfortunate witnesses to this cataclysm, somehow returning many generations later, successfully making contact with a civilization raised from the ashes of their now-forgotten world. Somehow surviving all this time in an ancient spacecraft, possibly better, possibly similar to our own modern space stations, absent long enough to be depicted by a people presumably astonished by their existence. Secondly, they could quite possibly depict ancient alien visitors to our planet either once deliberately making contact or once crashing here, forcing these entities to make contact, thus witnessed. Yet, if true, their likeness to Earthlings is a controversial consequence to said history. Or are all somehow a mere coincidence? One or two hoaxes, we feel, is a real reality. But for all these magnificent, enigmatic, and often clear depictions of similarly looking individuals, all being hoaxes? Yet so far separated geographically, we find unlikely. One must keep this in mind when studying such artifacts, such as the Istanbul rocket. The claimed ancient space module, which became one of the most popular artifacts of the Istanbul Archaeological Museum. Sought after by Western scientists and media alike, poured over and written about in hundreds of articles across Europe even featuring on television programs and within many newspaper articles. However, what is fascinating about this reality, that for many years, many specialists, often talented people, also just as often funded to presumably determine an inaccuracy in the object's claimed age, did not. Not until a few years ago, that is. In the last few years, it has been that the Istanbul rocket was apparently found to have been a hoax. A plaster cast made some 25 years ago. A puzzling claim when one remembers that just five years after, the space module was sought after by German and English, among many other national archaeologists, and was, for a long time, secured in the preservation unit of the museum. Was this really a plaster cast, a mere five years old when this discovery was announced, successfully fooling the world's scientific communities? Or was it like so many other artifacts we study, successfully stolen, then replaced with a clear fake? We will leave that up to you to decide from the evidence available. But an argument for found crash craft can also be seen in the inspiration for the creation of things, like that of the lid of Pakal's tomb. An enigmatic depiction of this same form of technology, again, turns up all over South America, and even further afield. The Kiev Spaceman, yet another found far away in the remote, desolate landscapes of Ukraine. Clearly, a depiction of a gas-breathing humanoid-shaped being, depicted with seemingly no injuries, 
Yet the reason for said depiction is an ongoing debate, yet due to its clear characteristics, a welcome member of this long list of ancient uparts. Ancient astronauts? Or merely an extremely elaborate, highly complex, hard-worked, long-lived hoax? We find the evidence to support the theory highly compelling. Acoustics. Something many are obsessed by, often splurging incredible amounts of money on technology in the pursuit of better and better sound. But acoustics is not merely limited to electric guitarists painting over which amp they should buy. It is also the studies of the properties of sound. A simple statement, yet it has far-reaching influences which reach not only deep into our psyche, but also into an inconceivably huge part of our lives and decision-making. Almost nearly all parts of our species' lives is influenced by it. Even looked at and used within the modern era as a main component within military weaponry. However, the term acoustic can also mean, and I quote, the properties or qualities of a room or building that determine how sound is transmitted in it. And this area is the one which we find tremendously interesting, as during our ongoing and in-depth research into many sites all over the world, coming to know a vast amount of interesting factors regarding a large swath of already studied or rather exposed sites within the modern mainstream. The Hypogeum in Malta being one of them, an extraordinary site that has been explored in detail and discovered to possess incredible acoustic abilities. Abilities which have been found at the site in question within this video. Yet we feel the connections between these remarkable sites need to be looked at closer. And the possibility that a now lost yet highly advanced, seemingly acoustically obsessed ancient civilization, not only once existing, becomes ever more likely, but that they succeeded in discovering incredible things. Things we are yet to fully understand regarding acoustic resonance. So much so, that it allowed them to be the original builders of these marvelous structures. It was first thought that seven circular structures, which are located around the sacred hill and on the neighboring hills, represented the Sun, Moon, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Mercury. However, interestingly, it was later hypothesized that there may be a grave monument and a sacred area still preserved here. Interestingly, it seems although it is thought that pagans in Somatash climbed up the sacred hill within permitted history, the team have not attributed them with the achievement of creating the sites. This, to us, seems highly unusual. So much so, we may actually be witnessing a change in attitudes within academic study. If so, this is an enormous victory on ours and more importantly, truth's behalf. Additionally, they have seemingly, bravely, put forward a quote which we also find highly intriguing, for it is one we feel, which would have once been dismissed, yet another grain of inclination that strategies and most important attitudes within academic pursuit is altering. Quote, the archaeoacoustic research group known as SB ask us to take into consideration that it is possible to perceive a magnetic field by empirical observation, and in the same way, to pursue a higher state of consciousness during meditation or rituals in the presence of strong infrasounds. They continued, If one were to extend this research to the ruins of the other six temples, it may provide further insight. End quote. We find these claims interesting especially due to the popularization of the acoustic knowledge regarding the Hypogeum in Malta. Additionally, ours and others repeated reports of the mass burial found there. Nearly 7,000 separate remains discovered there, some claimed as seemingly having alien origins, found buried at the Hypogeum, yet is, ironically, a story and discovery which has been long attempted to be buried itself. Yet these acoustic properties are undoubtedly incredibly intriguing, possibly groundbreakingly important, especially when one considers it is accompanied with a claim of undisturbed burial grounds. And when one considers what was claimed to have been found among the burial in Malta, a discovery we have previously covered. Somatash within Turkey is undoubtedly highly compelling. 
there are countless conspiracy theories which have been created over the years regarding not only the coldest, but also the most remote, unforgiving continent on Earth, Antarctica. Countless tales of ancient civilizations buried in the ice, preserved like something akin to Pompeii, quite possibly complete intact ruins of an ancient, advanced, now lost civilization. Their lifestyles, buildings, even entire cities are claimed by a number of fringe researchers as a real reality. Cities buried miles beneath the ice in a state of perfect preservation. Although we feel this may be an unlikely possibility, there could indeed be undeniable evidence of a past existence still buried under the ice, if indeed they were there at all, for one can never really be sure about the Perry Reese map. Yet today, this is a very unforgiving place, even sparking the inspiration for arguably one of the best science fiction movies of all time, The Thing. Stories of UFOs crashing into this incredibly remote landscape, some in which we have covered in the past, focused in upon by the channel due to the fact that an expedition was indeed made to a particular anomaly, to a feature, one indicative of a high-speed crash into the frozen tundra. This site was successfully traveled to within what we presume would have been a mobile laboratory, clearly undertaken by a well-equipped group, one who clearly didn't expect others to have spotted the site via satellite also. So they can clearly be seen via satellite imagery arriving at said crash. A tremendous effort to make, at tremendous expense, thus, a strange effort for any known human-built craft, unquestionably made at great expense. Illogical for a man-made craft, even that of secret technology, but for an alien craft, such efforts could be logically argued as a realistic motive for whoever this team was funded by to make the mission to the site. And there are, indeed, undeniably, some rather intriguing stories which still hover around a number of still classified, still unreleased confidential files regarding events within the Arctic Circle, claimed by a number of individuals who also claim to have been a part of said mission, a mission known as Operation High Jump was an event during a battle within the Arctic Circle with what could only be described as flying saucers. But alas, due to the fact that Americans have never publicly released any details regarding the operation, we can merely speculate. However, a story which surfaced on ancientcode.com, a website we have long supported as a superb source of antiquarian knowledge, a story accompanied by what we think, you will agree, are some of the most incredible images ever taken of UFOs, specifically unexplained anti-gravitational craft in flight ever captured. Available thanks to John Greenwald from The Black Vault, who in turn received the incredible images from researcher Alex Mistretta. According to the website, quote, The photos here displayed are evidence of a close encounter between forces of the United States Navy and unidentified flying objects on the edge of the Arctic Ocean in March 1971." End quote. Are we witnessing the destruction of anti-gravitational alien craft, an alien encounter, or, quite possibly, weapons testing events targeting reverse-engineered alien technology? The images are, according to said sources, from the mission USS Trepang SSN-674. Our postulations as to what these images reveal are based upon our own logically presumed direction, in which American and many other advanced military nations would take if one were presented with a crashed craft powered by said technologies. These military bodies would indeed pursue the reverse engineering of said technologies, then, secondarily, develop defense systems which were effective upon said technologies. These are, of course, merely mystery history's ponderings in regards to what these images could truly be showing us. And of course, said hypothesis could indeed be incorrect. Yet regardless, the question remains, then what do these images reveal? What are pictured within? Regardless of the purpose of the mission, we find the possible theories surrounding the photographs highly compelling. There are many ancient areas, which we often cover, which you, the viewer, will clearly realize is of a controversial nature, especially regarding dates, in which we claim are actively being denied and concealed 
by powerful and wealthy academic institutions. Many ancient relics within, and the fact that these, what we claim are lost antiquities, are often dated by us merely through logical processes of deduction, are therein dated far before the officially guarded modern development of man, or the path thereof. My work is actively denied, and regardless of the mountain, and still mounting volumes of evidence we present, still denied as having ever existed. Funding refused en masse in regards to any consideration whatsoever possible officially. Thus any claim in any form of a highly advanced civilization except our own ever occurring here on Earth before will always be denied. Civilizations so old, their ruins now easily dismissed by geologists the world over as natural formations. However, thanks to the fact that nature rarely builds walls and courses, or create enormous megalithic walls of equal sizes built in techniques akin to the modern house brick, yet with bricks often many hundreds, sometimes thousands of tons in weight, and all once seemingly effortlessly placed atop one another. And thanks to these clear factual elements, which can allow us to identify the artificial nature of many formations claimed as geological, this evidence thankfully still being visible upon these so-called geological formations. Features which enable all with critical capacities to distinguish that of a ruin academically suppressed by being systematically dismissed as geological. Kaimanawa Wall, near Lake Taupo, New Zealand, is but one example of this massive dismissal of ancient antiquity, reluctantly explored by mainstream academia in the late 90s. However, an individual by the name of Barry Brailsfords also published an article in the New Zealand Listener, which stated, as we do, that the wall is not geological, and for a brief moment created a public exposure of mainstream archaeology and historical institutions' active refusal of the obvious in favor of the already concluded. Barry Brailsford's valiant journalism considers the possibility of a lost civilization, like one mentioned earlier and although, in his opinion, is located within permitted history, and our claim is of one far older, pre-Ice Age in fact, he still, regardless, pinned its creation on the correct parties. Titled Megalith Mystery, are giant stones in the Kaimanawa Forest Park evidence of an ancient New Zealand culture? According to Brailsford's article, the stone wall is at least 2,000 years old and was created by the first settlers of New Zealand, the Waitaha. Furthermore, Brailsford also pertained to the wall being a link between New Zealand, Egypt, and South America. We feel his article is a very well-presented investigation into what is clearly an ancient ruin of artificial origin. However, we attest to the wall being a relic of a once far more advanced and much older, now lost civilization. Brailsford listed 12 pieces of evidence for its construction. For example, the fact that the visible stones in the front are a uniform 1.9 meters wide by 1.6 meters tall and 1 meter wide deep. However, politically, the view that civilizations existed in New Zealand before the Maori culture, the currently protected paradigm, is never going to be accepted. The conclusion made by the commissioned funded geologists, it that the formation is merely an outcrop of a large ignimbrite, a natural formation created about 330,000 years ago. They claim the uniform shapes were produced by conveniently identical fractures in the rock. The official line is that the Kaimanawa wall has been proclaimed a natural rock formation. And we know better than many that this tale of events is very unlikely to change in the future. Yet, regardless of this, we find the Kaimanawa wall highly compelling.